worked with solitones and solitones in the acoustics since a very long time. So, every time I'm done, for you. Thank you. As noted, my name was Kerta, and from my co-authors, many of you already know Yuri Engelbert, who is sitting there, and Hanel Pietz uh, could not make it today. And I would like today to talk about uh, mathematical modeling of uh, nerve signals today. I will start with a um, short overview about uh, action and what we are exactly trying to model and uh, focus mostly on the philosophical aspects uh, of our framework. Uh, then I will go shortly over, over our uh, model equations, one by one, followed by contact forces, and in the end there is uh, some numerical uh, result, results as well. So, I think uh, everybody in this room already knows what action is, so I will keep this rather brief. Uh, in our setting, we take action as less elastic uh, tube filled with bit exoplas, and uh, there is some waves propagating on it. And on the right, there is a typical shape of the action potential. Uh, one could say that the study of uh, nerve pulse uh, propagation is uh, like almost classical field of science with the a number of well-established models, like, for example, Hodgkin-Huxley model. However, over the years, uh, many people have noted the continued room for improvements, starting with Hodgkin and Huxley themselves, and uh, several more recent publications. <coughs> so, what aspects of the nerve pulses are we going to take into account? First, of course, is the action potential which is uh, what people usually think when they talk about nerve pulse propagation with a number of uh, well-established models. Uh, then there is uh, mechanical displacement of, or the density changes with a number of experimental observations and uh, some theoretical models. Then this, uh, is pressure change in exoplas measured by Terakawa, Tasaki, others. And then there is temperature changes during and after uh, nerve pulse propagation with uh, quite a number of uh, experimental observations. And few more things which uh, we are not going to take into account today. And there are actually two sentences I quite like related to modeling nature. First one is by Einstein, noting that when we are composing a mathematical model, we should make things as simple as possible, but not simple. And the second one is by Toffler, noting that uh, modern science is actually quite good, making uh, complex problems into many simple problems. So good that we sometimes forget to put those things back together. So, this is the model system uh, we are going to describe mathematically on the following slides. Uh, this is axon, uh, surrounded by lipid B layers, filled with exoplas, and there is a number of waves propagating in there. Uh, couple of sentences also, why mathematical modeling? First, it allows one to propose uh, what if type scenarios, which can lead to better understanding of actual process we are trying to model. And second, when we are solving our mathematical models, we can make some observations. And uh, later, we need to experimentally verify or falsify those observations. Uh, of course, we need to start somewhere. We start with an assumption of hypothesis that uh, the action potential is the trigger which makes everything happen later. And we make a number of assumptions. <coughs> First, we assume that, uh, as, as noted, that the action potential is the trigger process. 
Uh, we assume that extra plus can be modeled as a simple fluid with some viscosity. Uh, we assume that the biomembrane is elastic and can be deformed. Uh, and then we assume that uh, as the biomembrane density changes, it can affect uh, those electrical side signals which were our trigger. And in the end, there is also temperature, and uh, we assume that uh, other process, processes are driving temperature in this framework. And this is the block diagram of our uh, model. For action potential, we use uh, feature of UMO, uh, which gives us a uh, reasonably correct signal shape. For pressure, we use uh, wave equation with that uh, viscous viscosity. For mechanical wave, we use uh, improved hand projection model, which is uh, a Poussin-esque type equation with nonlinear and dispersive terms. And for temperature, we use uh, classical heat equation as reasonable enough starting point. And where the real magic happens, so to say, uh, is those arrows between those boxes where our uh, contact forces are. <coughs> and this is the set of model equations we are going to solve for our uh, numerical example. I will go over those uh, briefly one by one, and there is also a couple of slides for contact forces. First, action potential. Uh, we use feature on a boom equation. Uh, it's good enough, because it, what we need is the correct signal shape. And in the original notation, feature on a boom equation has uh, one activation coefficient, but we have split it in two. And this uh, mechanical activation coefficient uh, allows uh, the biomembrane density affect the electrical signal. Uh, pressure, we have uh, classical wave equation with uh, viscosity and uh, some uh, coupling term. Uh, improved hand projection equation. <coughs> and in here, here, uh, <coughs> And this uh, first dispersive term is for uh, elastic properties of the biomembrane, and the second dispersive term is for the inertial properties of the biomembrane. And in experimental observation, what people, observation that people usually measure is the transverse displacement of the biomembrane. But this equation is for longitudinal density change. <coughs> So what we do, we take some inspiration from theory of roads. Note that uh, in their uh, transverse displacement is usually proportional to the longitudinal density change and that gives us what we need. And for temperature, we have the classical heat equation. And this is our most recent addition to this system. So there is uh, things which will need to be improved. Uh, about contact forces. <coughs> when we are adding something to our equations, this should not be arbitrary activity. We need some kind of idea why and what are we adding there. And this is one possible interpretation of, uh, of the contact forces we are using. And I would like to explain a little bit the logic behind that. Our one-dimensional axon is... Uh, there is a spatial uh, axis going along the axon, uh, axon, which means that if you have a gradient, it must be something which is acting along our action. And if you have a time derivative, this must be something acting locally in space. So we interpret it as acting across the, uh, across the biomembrane. <coughs> For temperature, we have considered a number of different possibilities, and three of those are exposed in the numerical example. 
and the rest can be found in our most recently accepted publication in the Journal of non equilibrium Thermodynamics. <coughs> so, numerical example. Let me skip the parameters and detail, detailed description of the numerical scheme that can be found there. And let's get straight to the results. Uh, first, a couple of sentences about uh, derivatives. Uh, the improved Heimburg Jackson equation or Bushinesque type equations can have analytical solutions which are uh, hyperbolic second uh, shape. If you take a derivative from that kind of uh, shape, you get uh, something like uh, measured by Tasaki and others. And uh, the second picture is uh, for our contact uh, force uh, shapes. Uh, Actually, the time derivatives and space derivatives are, have similar shapes in our one-dimensional setting. What is important there is this uh, bipolarity of the signal. Because if you are using unipolar signal as a driving force, you just keep adding to your solution and it just, uh, you, you just amplify it away. <coughs> so, the results. Action potential, ion current from the feature of the equation, pressure profile, uh, longitudinal density change, transverse displacement is this uh, red, and those uh, oscillations are from the parameters we used because of the dispersion properties. And finally, all those uh, equations, <coughs> solutions in the same frame, and some temperature profiles with uh, that kind of driving uh, time forces. And in the end there is also a real short uh, animation to show how they come. And let that, let's sum up. <coughs> we started from system at rest, uh, giving action potential above threshold in the middle of our spatial period. This uh, makes action potential propagate to the left and to the right, uh, which in turn generates all, generates all the other waves. I, I was just saying. Qualitatively, there is a good agreement with uh, experimental observations. We did not demonstrate this uh, explicitly, but uh, our uh, density can change uh, electrical signal. And uh, the model temperature profiles are in uh, good enough uh, agreement with a number of publications. What we could do to improve things? Uh, we could use, of course, uh, some improved model for action potential, like Hodgkin Huxley. Uh, <coughs> the wave equation seems to be good enough uh, starting point. But perhaps we should be using two-dimensional wear stocks or some other improved model. Uh, then, if we are going to use uh, biomembrane density as a source of thermal energy, we need to add something there which actually moves uh, part of this mechanical energy to the thermal part. And uh, the heat equation we used seemed a reasonable enough starting point, but there seems to be room for improvement. For example, in some publications, uh, endothermic chemical reactions have been noted to be potentially significant. And of course, pace, pace changes, no, something else. And thank you for your attention, and I will start this short uh, animation as well. Questions, please. Thomas. <coughs> I think I didn't get it. Um, you have you use a, a, a model similar to ours, yes. right? With an extra dispersion term, yes. Right? And then you add somehow fixed Nagumo also. How did you how do you couple the two things? Uh, we take uh, the, the energy, I mean, what we do, we start from zero 
there is nothing, nothing in uh, biometry. Yeah. And then we have this coupling term, this is force. Mm -hmm. This goes into the root injection model as a source term. And then from the changes in electrical signal, this uh, starts insert, inserting energy mm -hmm. into this equation. Yeah. And that makes the, those uh, mechanical waves appear there. But the principle of the Nagumo model is a simplification of the Oshinaki yes, model, sir. which basically contains all the conductances that we have. In the, basically, um, I think the, the beauty of, of, of the view from, from Martin before, and, and, and also ours, is it has only very few parameters to it, with a, with a very large number, with a wealth of, of phenomena. But you some, somehow put many, many parameters, parameters back into that. So, so to, in order to cover everything, you basically um, add up the number of parameters from Hodgkin Huxley with the parameters from, 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 a, from a mechanical view. And then, then um, yeah, of, of, of course, you can fit more things when you, when you have more parameters. Yeah. But somehow, you started with that quote from Einstein, you should make them yeah. as simple as possible. Well, feature of Uma is relatively <laughs> simple than... Uh, well, I mean, feature of Uma is basically an equation for electrical circuit, which uh, gives us a sort of correct uh, signal shape. Yeah, but it, it's based on the assumption of yeah. the permeabilities in the membrane. Yes. And yeah. selection processes. Well, I mean, I can't uh, model electrical signal without any parameters. So I, I have to have something if I want to take this into account. Yeah, but the question that I have there is, if you, of, of course, may, I have seen that very often, that people try to describe nature by fitting it, things as much as possible. Now, of course, the more parameters you have, the better you can fit things, and the less insight you gain. Right? Mm -hmm. Because, of course, in the end, the best fit is just nature itself, and, 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 and you, you make a perfect map, map of everything, but if you have an infinite number of parameters, you gain, don't gain insight. You gain, you gain the insight by reducing the number of parameters, don't you? Well, I would say that uh, what we are adding are the contact forces, because yeah. the individual equations themselves are relatively well studied. I mean, there is very many papers on Hodgkin Huxley and Pichon and Humo and, and action potentials. What we are actually doing, we are taking uh, quite well established models, mm -hmm. which exist, mm -hmm. and we are just adding those uh, contact terms mm -hmm. with, between those, on assumption that we already kind of understand what those individual components do. Mm -hmm. And what is important for us is the interactions between those uh, individual uh, relatively simple equations. So in this sense, the number of parameters we are adding is somewhat limited. Of course, there might be practical difficulties in actually measuring contact forces mm -hmm. when you want to do an experiment. How many parameters? Uh, in this case, uh, six additional parameters. For uh, three for the contact force between uh, Fijon and Uma, and improve the projection, and three for uh, uh, pressure, between pressure and this mechanical and uh, action potential. Six, you have for Chenati around 15, and so much. How can I, uh, we have only four. four. We have only four. Yeah. But Hodgkin yeah. actually has something, if you really take it seriously, of like 28 or so. Yeah, yeah. Much, much more than 15. I have seen a number like 40. Mm -hmm. And then uh, picks to one special case. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen models where they do five channels and they have 66 yeah. parameters. Yeah, yeah that, that's actually one of the reasons why we went with Fitch and mm -hmm. Because we were looking at Hodgkin Huxley, and we were looking at all those parameters. And, uh, background is physics, mm -hmm. so it just went <laughs> uh, My theory has no fit parameters, but only qualitative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is uh, only qualitative similarity. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> okay, any further questions? Then I thank the speaker again and move on.